While widespread censorship does not occur in the West, there are some instances where both very democratic and very undemocratic countries will do everything they can to prevent you from seeing certain images. In today's video, we've compiled a list of images that were either banned in the past or that are currently under censorship bans. So let's begin. Here are the top 15 photos the government does not want you to see. Number 15, Winnie the Pooh. While Winnie the Pooh may be a cute and lovable cartoon bear, he unfortunately happens to have a striking resemblance to Xi Jinping. After all, both have a similar body shape and facial structure, and it was for this crime of resemblance that in 2017, Winnie the Pooh was banned in China. This is largely because Xi Jinping is not known for being able to take a joke, and on a macro scale, he's worried that the comparisons bloggers have made between him and the cartoon bear may diminish his image in the eyes of the public and potentially prevent Chinese citizens from adoring him. So, as such, it's impossible to watch Winnie the Pooh in China, and all mentions of Pooh on social media are similarly banned. Number 14. Mexican Asylum Plan All right, now generally speaking, agreements between governments are meant to stay secret until they're officially published. However, in 2019, former President Trump made a large diplomatic faux pas when he accidentally revealed the text of an important document before it was officially agreed upon. You see, during this time period, he was in negotiations with Mexico to not introduce new tariffs in exchange for increasing border control measures. However, the plans were not yet finalized. Yet despite this, Trump had an interview with the press where he had a folded up document in his hand. Despite being folded, the bright sunlight meant that the text was fully readable, and a journalist took a high resolution image of the paper that was then leaked to the public. And while the info that was leaked wasn't exactly catastrophic, it was a major diplomatic embarrassment to the leader of the world's most powerful country. Number 13. President Mohammad Khatami As far as Iranian politics go, former President Mohammad Khatami was nothing if not a moderate. Serving from 1997 until 2005, he was very popular at the beginning of his reign. As with the help of support from the country's youth, women, and intellectuals, he was elected with almost 70% of the vote. However, his position that Iran should have increased contact with the United States angered many conservative elements within Iranian society, while his push for reforms towards increased freedom of expression, tolerance, and civil society were also heavily demonized. As a result, when the more conservative President Hassan Rouhani took office in 2013, he did not want the former president's legacy to be remembered. And in 2015, he banned Iran's media from publishing his name or image. As such, President Khatami's pictures are essentially banned in the country, and given Iran's awful human rights record, I wouldn't suggest testing your luck by bringing any if you ever get the chance to travel there. Number 12. Women the Taliban aren't exactly the world's most well-liked political organization, as its deep connection to fundamentalist militant Islamist and jihadist beliefs has made it a menace to the people who live within Afghanistan. However, as the ruling party, they seized total control in Afghanistan after the complete American withdrawal in August and September of 2021. Yet, in order to not face widespread sanctions, they at first tried to appeal to the international community and more moderate elements by stating that women were not property and promising to uphold human rights. However, in December of 2021, they sharply reversed their stance by passing a ban on women appearing in advertisements. This essentially means that images of women cannot be used to sell items. And since they made this law retrospective, an order was also made to remove all banners, signboards, billboards, and posters that have pictures of women from all public spaces. All of this was supposedly done under the guise of Islamic law, and time will tell whether or not similar justifications will be made for more anti-women legislation in the future. Number 11. Great Depression Images During the Great Depression of the late 1920s and 1930s, the United States had to come to grips with one of the most widespread humanitarian disasters in the country's history. With millions out of work and horrible harvests plaguing the agricultural areas of the country, the country fell into the depths of an economic crisis, and this sparked a desire to document the lives of ordinary people. As such, in the 1930s, the U.S. Farm Security Administration, or FSA, began an ambitious photo-taking project, and this led to thousands of pictures being taken across the United States. 
However, not all of these photos would go on to be published, and these forbidden photographs were marked by a black hole punch. In essence, censored by the government agency, the hole punch made these photos unfit for any sort of professional media usage, with the total count coming at over 100,000 forbidden photos. While the reasoning behind their ban on publication is unknown, in recent years they've finally been published, giving the public a taste of what the US government did not want anyone to see. Number 10. Unflattering Photos While Thailand may be a democracy, its reigning monarchy is nothing if not despotic. After all, any criticism of them can lead to extremely harsh jail sentences, and this severeness seems to extend to images as well. This is because it's illegal to post any image of the king that is unflattering, and surprisingly, these images are quite commonly taken. You see, while most royals out there go to great lengths to maintain their composure and not look foolish in the public eye, Thai king Maha Vajira Longkorn is known for being a bit of a playboy, as he's infamous for getting fake tattoos, drinking constantly, and gambling large sums. And the end result is that after a late night out, he often looks a little worse for wear. Strangely enough, after these late-night jaunts, he can be seen the next morning wearing a cropped tank top. And since this doesn't look all that regal, such images cannot be shared on Thai social media, with large fines and prison sentences being the potential punishment. However, given the king's behavior, this censorship unfortunately has to occur more often than the government would like. Number 9. Refugee Camps Governments generally try to paint their efforts to assist others in a positive light, and as a result they often ban the taking of pictures at refugee camps. This is because while these camps should, in theory, provide people fleeing violence with a peaceful place to stay, oftentimes they house people in such horrific conditions that governments try to prevent any footage from being taken or journalists from entering. To date, one of the worst refugee camps in recent memory was the Moria refugee camp on the Greek island of Lesbos. Only captured on film thanks to the help of hidden cameras and friendly informants, the camp was largely considered to be the worst in Europe, with this being the case because it packed more than 8,000 people into a hellhole marked by unsanitary conditions, drugs, prostitution, and violence. This is partially thanks to the fact that a complete lack of policing allowed members of ISIS to occupy a privileged position in the camp, terrorizing residents and forcing them to pack in tight quarters, while keeping most sanitary and open areas to themselves. And while the camp closed down in September of 2020 after a fire burned it down, it served as a reminder as how not to run a refugee camp. Number 8. Swastikas while most people are not a fan of censorship, censorship is definitely for the best when it comes to swastikas. You see, while the swastika enjoys a surprising amount of legality around the world, ever since the end of World War II, Germany has taken a hard stance against any and all Nazi symbols. Done in an effort to denazify the country, the bans are still in effect today. And while they do make allowances for civic education, countering anti-constitutional activities, art, science, research and education, and the coverage of historic and current events, generally speaking, swastikas cannot be sold on merchandise or displayed publicly. This means that if you were to say draw a swastika with no context and take a picture of it, you would be breaking the law by sharing it, as even online and social media, these same laws still apply. The reason behind this ban is because the symbol is considered to be anti-constitutional, and the maximum fine for showing these images is up to three years in prison. However, in recent years, the government has gotten slightly more lax by allowing video games to have swastikas if given approval by the government. Although given Germany's history, I'd say that harsh rules surrounding swastikas are probably for the best. Number 7. Putin in Drag Within Russia, Vladimir Putin has used propaganda to carefully craft himself as a strong, manly, and able leader. After all, he is quite fond of circulating images of himself in the wilderness bare-chested, and generally speaking, he doesn't handle criticism all that well. As a result, when a photo of Putin looking a little less stereotypically masculine than he would have liked began to spread across social media, he quickly began efforts to have it shut down. In essence, the picture is of Putin in full drag makeup captioned with the phrase, Stop Homophobia, and according to Russian law, it implies that Putin is of a, quote, non-standard sexual orientation, end quote. 
Now, this post first began to make the rounds online in 2013 after Russia passed a law banning teaching children about non-traditional sexual relations. And when LGBTQ protesters took to the streets, they were quickly beaten and arrested in response. It was in the midst of this political environment that this picture was born, and it became more and more viral as Russia continued to crack down on sexual liberties and online speech. However, in 2017, Russia finally had enough and banned the photo. Although in spite of this, the image can still be seen even within Russia if you dig deep enough. Number six, Liu Xiaobo. Practically every authoritarian country has its dissidents, although few are quite as high profile as Liu Xiaobo. Known for his work as a writer, literary critic, and human rights activist, for most of his life he had a public anti-government stance on the CCP, with this stance being maintained regardless of who was in power. However, he first began to set off the government's alarm bells when he vocally participated in the Tiananmen Square protests in 1989. And even after being arrested and released, he continued his pro-democracy work. As China became more and more authoritarian, Liu Xiaobo was arrested more and more often, and in 2010, he was thrown in jail permanently. This led to him being given a Nobel Peace Prize while in prison, becoming the first Chinese citizen to have the honor of receiving that prize while in China itself. However, in 2017, he passed away, and rather than honor his legacy, the CCP rather predictably made all attempts possible to remove it. That's because they not only scattered his ashes in the sea so that no shrine could be made to him, but also decided to ban any image or mention of him on the internet. As a result, Liu Xiaobo has become almost unknown in China, as the government's efforts to cover up his life story seem to have worked fairly well. Number 5. Iranian Missile Launch Site In 2019, Iran had a catastrophic failure at a nuclear missile launch site, and upon testing one of those missiles, a large explosion happened, causing much of the facility to be damaged or destroyed. Former President Trump was absolutely ecstatic upon hearing the news, and in his excitement decided to post a classified picture of the launch site on Twitter. While Trump was happy to have it up, government and military leaders immediately began trying to redact it from Twitter to no avail. This is because the image should have never been posted, and the reason for this is because it gives away crucial information about U.S. espionage activities. You see, while the picture may look harmless, the angle can be used to determine which satellite took the photo, and an astronomer used this strategy to determine that the spacecraft that took the picture was Satellite USA-224 photo also hinted to the fact that the satellite could account for items that were as little as 10 centimeters long, and that information has suggested that Satellite USA-224 is one of the most powerful espionage machines in existence today. Now that other countries know this, they can now take measures to counter the satellite's effects, rendering this extremely important piece of technology useless. As such, it was a very large faux pas on the part of President Trump. Number four, violent police officers. While the Canadian federal government may have the ultimate say over the law in Canada, there are still quite a few freedoms given to the provinces, and few provinces are quite as distinct as the province of Quebec. After all, Quebec has language, culture, and civil laws that are markedly different from the rest of Canada due to its French heritage. And while this usually isn't too big of a deal, a Quebec judge used his power for the worst in 2009. You see, in 2008, two police officers approached a group of teenage boys and, by all reputable accounts, needlessly fought one of them and shot him dead. This led to public outrage, and as the images of the two officers circled around the internet, things got so bad that the mountain of complaints for various reprehensible acts both in the recent and distant past became pouring in in relation to the two officers. In response, the judge in charge ordered a ban on publishing anything that could lead to the identification of those cops, with this including any pictures or explicit naming. While the legality of this ban was questioned, it nonetheless seemed to work as the media stopped mentioning the two officers and began to use very vague words to refer to the case. In the end, the two officers got off scot-free, and they now continue to serve in Montreal's police department. Number 3. Soldiers in Berlin World War II was nothing short of being a propagandist's wet dream, as it was during this time period that some of the most profound examples of nationalist images were created. One of the most famous is the picture taking of the raising of the U.S. flag at Iwo Jima, 
and in 1945, the USSR got their chance to strike back with their iconic picture of the flag over Reichstag, depicting a Soviet soldier waving the Soviet Union flag over the German Reichstag or Parliament building in Berlin. It was a symbol of ultimate communist victory over fascism, and as a result, it was widely circulated within the Soviet Union. However, before it could be sent out, it had to undergo a very important change. You see, in the original photograph, the soldier below, the one waving the flag, has what appears to be a wristwatch on his right hand. Given that most people wear their watches on their left hand, this was seen as very strange, and while it could not be confirmed, it was assumed by Soviet leadership that the watch had likely been looted by the soldier as he tore through the city. Since the punishment for looting was death, the Soviet government didn't want this picture to be spread publicly without some touch-ups, so they doctored the original image so that his hand appeared to have no wristwatch. It was only after this change that the image was widely circulated, leading to the original being an embarrassment that was intentionally hidden by the Soviet government. Number 2. Tank Man whether you're a Chinese history buff or just a casual internet scroller, chances are you've seen the images of Tank Man. While unidentified to this day, he's a man who, during the Tiananmen protests in 1989, stood in front of a tank and refused to move. For those of you who don't know, the Tiananmen protests were a set of student-led demonstrations that called for democracy, free speech, and a free press in China. While these protests started out small, several hunger strikes and swelling numbers increased their publicity, and at their height, over a million protesters had packed themselves into Beijing's Tiananmen Square. Yet while similar protests in many other communist countries were successful, the Chinese government opted to take a very hard-line approach here. By the end of March, hundreds of thousands of Chinese troops had been deployed, yet when they failed to make much of a dent, the central government told the soldiers to bloody their knuckles. This led to them opening fire on protesters, and once all was said and done, it's believed that at least several thousand people lost their lives. Amidst all this chaos, Tank Man was a symbol of the resilience of the Chinese against the oppression of their government. However, as you might expect, the current Chinese government doesn't support the subversion that Tank Man represents, and so with the help of the Great Firewall of China, all mention of him is wiped from the Chinese internet, with these efforts generally being ramped up around the anniversary of the date. As a result, it's been reported that these efforts have helped make the memory of the protests fade from public conscience, although it is hard to know what is said or remembered behind closed doors. Number 1. The Uyghur Concentration Camps China has been systematically destroying Uyghur society through both a cultural and literal genocide for years, but it's only been recently that satellite images of the camps have become publicly available. For those of you who don't know, the Uyghur Muslims are an ethnic group that primarily lives in the northwestern province of Xinjiang, and they have a total population of about 13 million, if Chinese government figures are to be believed. For years, Xinjiang was considered to be an autonomous region of China that had marginally more autonomy than many other regions. But ever since 2014, the Chinese government has tried to assimilate the Uyghurs into the Han majority. This first began with ramping up police surveillance in the area under the guise of preventing religious terrorism that was in reality near non-existent. The result of this was the regulation or banning of Muslim practices such as growing a beard, having a prayer rug, or quitting smoking and drinking. And this eventually ramped up into the introduction of so-called re-education camps. While it's been claimed that these are supposed to de-radicalize ethnic Uyghurs, the reality is there isn't anything to de-radicalize, and instead these camps are simply propaganda machines for the Chinese Communist Party. Now, generally speaking, a day in the life of a detainee includes doing things such as singing hymns praising the CCP, writing what are known as self-criticism essays, and being subjected to physical and verbal abuse. Beyond this indoctrination, the prisoners are also often forced to work as slave laborers on local cotton farms, which has led to a massive internal boycott of companies that use that cotton. When you further consider that more than a million people may be imprisoned at these camps, it becomes clear that they're a massive problem. Now, the Chinese government has been both denying and mitigating the true nature of these camps for years, but satellite footage shows that they not only exist, but have several disturbing features and be it fields for laborers to till or massive buildings for inmates to be kept in, it's become clear that this genocide isn't something to be ignored. 
It's also clear that the Chinese government doesn't want people to know about them through their massive propaganda campaign that's trying to obscure the situation. However, the true nature of the situation is absolutely horrifying. Watch our obscure playlist for more top 15 videos about the more obscure subjects in our world. Sit back, relax, and binge watch all of our best and most obscure videos.